What's up guys, it's Ian here back with another video and today I'm here to bring you a chest and tricep workout. We're going to start out by warming up with the rings turned in ring push up. I'm just going to get one set of 10 repetitions here. I'm focusing on getting the hands shoulder width apart at the top and at the bottom. I'm moving my elbows out and keeping my wrists stacked underneath the elbows the whole time. So as I'm moving through the range of motion, the wrists should be tracking directly beneath the elbows. When you're performing all of the ring push up very make sure you keep your neck either neutral or slightly extended so that means your head will either be in a neutral position or slightly lifted that's going to help enable you to keep your shoulder blades depressed which will improve the quality of your push-ups next up I'm going to perform the rings turned out support hold when I'm setting the ring height for the rings turned out support hold I like to stand on my tiptoes and then set the rings so that the bottom of the ring is about at the height of my wrist this is going to ensure that I can fully extend the hips and point the toes while performing this exercise and that my feet won't touch the ground and interrupt the alignment of the body during this exercise. Once you've dialed in that ring height, make sure that you use a firm grip, fully extend the elbows, fully depress the shoulders, and try to pull the shoulders back into a neutral alignment and also try to keep the head and neck in a neutral position. That's going to help you manage your shoulder position and prevent the chest from caving in while you're performing these support holds. Just finished those two sets of rings turned out support holds. Now we're getting into the main exercises of today's workout. I'm going to perform three sets of five repetitions of the full range of motion dip. So at the bottom, I'm going all the way until the rings touch the chest. And then at the top, I'm going to go for the rings turned out support hold. So I'm trying to reach full hip extension, fully depress those shoulders, get my head up and to turn the palms forward at the top of each repetition. This makes the dips a lot harder, but it also makes them a lot more beneficial and having carryover to more difficult exercises. So depending on what your goals are, it might be beneficial to work in some sets of these full range of motion dips somewhere in your workout. When performing the full range of motion dips, I like to apply the same cues and thought process that I do when I'm performing the rings turned out support hold. So I like to really lift my head, try to keep the head and neck in a neutral position at the top of each repetition. That's going to allow me to extend the hips, point the toes, and I'm keeping the rings at the same height so that way I can force the body into a straight line and and still not touch the ground with my feet. If I had a higher place to mount the rings, I would actually aim to keep the entire body in a straight line throughout the entire exercise, but because my rings are so close to the ground, I'm forced to essentially bend the knees and the hips in the lower portion of the dip exercise. So at the top of each of these full range of motion dips, make sure you're really turning those palms forward, depressing the shoulders fully, lifting the head, squeezing your glutes, and reaching that straight line rings turned out support hold, or as close to that position as you feel comfortable reaching. If you're not yet comfortable with the rings turned out support hold position, it could be a good idea to refine your ring turn out support hold before you include the full range of motion dips in your workouts. Next up, we have the rings turned out push up. The main objective here is to keep the arms relatively close to the body and to have the palms facing either completely forward or slightly diagonally forward. So at the bottom of each repetition, my hands might be slightly diagonal like so. And then when I come to the top of each repetition, I'm really aiming to protract the shoulders fully and try to get the palms as forward facing as possible. If you're not yet used to performing the rings turned out ring push-ups, I would advise to aim for a small number of repetitions and go really slowly on the way down and use a lot of control and tempo so that way you don't go too far because there's nothing really stopping you on the way down. So you want to really go slowly on the way down and dial in the range of motion that you want. On this exercise, I've found it beneficial for my current fitness level to just go until the elbows are at about a 90 degree angle but depending on your strength and fitness level you may be able to go further than that as with the rings turned in push-ups I definitely advise keeping your head and neck neutral or slightly lifted while performing these rings turned out push-ups that's going to give you the best chance of keeping your shoulder blades depressed during this exercise during the top of this exercise we do actually want to protract the shoulder blades but to also keep them depressed being able to protract the shoulder blades under load is going to strengthen the serratus interior and get a bit of additional training effect for the triceps and front delt. This is going to be beneficial if one of your goals is building towards the planche variations as acclimating your body to load in that protracted shoulder position is extremely critical to advancing those progressions. So on this exercise, your shoulder blades will become slightly more retracted as you approach the bottom of the push-up. So as your elbows approach that 90 degree angle, your shoulders
shoulder blades will naturally retract, but you want to keep your shoulder blades depressed the entire time. And as you approach the top of the rings turned up ring push-up, you want to protract the shoulder blades, but also keep them depressed. Out of all the body weight exercises that I've tried, I actually feel like these rings turned up push-ups are one of the most effective chest exercises that I've tried. Maybe it's just the manner that I'm performing this exercise. Individuals do have variable responses to the same exercises, so definitely try them out and see if you like them. I recommend going really slowly on the way down, maybe even pausing with the elbows in that 90 degree bottom position. And then after you come up, really protract the shoulders, take a second at the top to reset. They are pretty difficult, but I'm also trying to do them with a slow and controlled tempo. Because as I said, there's nothing stopping you on the way down, so you don't want to overshoot it. If you're just starting this exercise, I advise being careful with this movement as you would with any new exercise. And I think that you could potentially get a lot out of this exercise. Next up, I'm going to perform two sets on the tuck planche hold on parallettes. What's different this time is I'm going to aim to maintain the shoulder blade position and drop my knees down into more of an advanced tuck position. I can't yet hold the advanced tuck planche, but I definitely want to be able to. Most of the times in the past when I've attempted to transition into an advanced tuck position, the back either becomes extended or the elbows become bent or the shoulders fall out of protraction. So the main purpose of this exercise is to make a very small change in the lower body position and try to maintain the shoulder blade and elbow position, leaning the shoulders a little bit further forward to counterbalance the body as the knees come down is going to be key and really focusing on trying to keep those elbows straight. The last exercise for today, I'm going to put my feet against the wall and perform a few sets of planche leans on parallettes. I'm shooting for about 10 seconds here and I'm leaning forward as far as I can. I'm really trying to squeeze the glutes and the legs to get that straight line body position and I'm trying to force my shoulder blades forward into a protracted position. I'm trying to keep my head neutral or slightly lifted and that's going to allow you to keep the shoulder blades depressed. You also want to be protracting them but you don't want to elevate them as that would change the leverages involved and not really have the carryover that you're looking for on this exercise. Thank you for coming and taking the time out of your day to watch this video and as always have a good day.